welcome to A Little Box of Paints with Art for Grown Ups, where I share a delicious cocktail with you and a super cool, easy, relaxing art activity that you can do at home on your own time while you're staying safe and staying inside. Um, today, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my cocktail for the evening, and then we're going to do a mixture of some drawing with a little bit of painting. We're gonna be doing some kind of, um, how do I wanna say this, sort of ad hoc perspective drawing. So this is the great uh, type, of, uh, type of activity that's great for people who don't really know how to do perspective drawing, but who would like to have drawings that maybe look like a perspective drawing. So um, before we get started though, we are going to try out our new cocktail. So once again, it is gin. Sorry, I like gin. You know what, I shouldn't apologize for gin cocktails. Everyone should be drinking these, they're delicious. The gin we're gonna to try today is called um, Bus Number 509. It is a premium gin from Belgium, from Antwerp actually. And this is my first time trying this gin today. And it is absolutely delicious. It's got a beautiful little pink color to it, you can see, um, because it is infused with some grapefruit. It's got a lot of other the, reg um, the other regular sort of botanicals inside on the back. It lists them. We've got juniper, coriander, licorice, angelica, whatever that is. Uh, vanilla, cardamom, iris, orange, lemon, and of course, pink grapefruit. And I like it because it in a cute little bottle, right? Such a cute little bottle. Um, we're going to be mixing with just a nice tonic. I've got the Fever Tree um, Indian Tonic, which is really nice. It is a little more expensive, but what else are you spending your money on right now? You know, we're all locked inside, can't go shopping, can't travel, might as well treat yourself to a nice tonic. Since this is infused with pink grapefruit, we're gonna take a citrus approach today, but it won't be the usual lime. I've actually got a orange slice, and then I'm gonna actually squeeze half an orange into this as well too. Okay, so um, let's get started. I'm gonna take my cup, I've already got a bit of ice in there. I never measure my drinks. I just kinda eye it out a couple glug glugs. Mm -hmm. Looks good, you know and a little bit of the Fever Tree as well. The reason I like these glass bottles of Fever Tree is because that they basically are the exact amount for the cups I have, so it works really well. <sighs> That's fine. That doesn't normally happen. It's been a long day. We'll keep going. I'm not gonna refill this, you know? It's not worth it. <laughs> So I've got my fever tree in there and uh, now I'm going to toss my orange juice in. I'm going to squeeze it. This is probably going to go everywhere. You want to try and get as much of that in there as you can. Give her a good little squeeze. Definitely getting orange on the table. Starting to fizz. It's getting a nice color actually. And then my garnish, which is just another slice of orange. And then my straw. Um, I really should have grabbed more paper towel. That was a mistake on my part. I'll probably do that at some point today. Cheers. Hope you like it. Yeah, it's lovely. It's got such a fresh, crisp flavor to it. Um, a lot of citrus, but not too much. And it doesn't have as much of a bite that you get with the lime because you've got that orange in there. All right, now that that's finished and I've spilt tonic and a bit of gin all over my table and already soaked my paper towel for my watercolor. Let's talk a little bit about the materials you're gonna need. Um, we are gonna be doing a mixture, like I said, of watercolor painting and a little bit of drawing. So I'm gonna be using a thicker watercolor paper. Whatever paper you have, of course, as always, you gotta use what you have. Um, but yeah, I think uh, if you've got watercolor paper, this would be a great time to use it. I've got my watercolor paints out here as well too. I picked two brush sizes, a medium and a big one. I don't even know if I'm gonna use them both. And then I have my pens. I'm gonna be using two types of pens, I think. Regular Sharpie. You all know I use Sharpie for everything. Um, and I also have these really nice Copic micro liner pens and they are actually um, water and Copic proof. So basically you can use these with other Copic markers and they won't bleed. Um, they're a little expensive, so I wouldn't bother getting something like this specifically for this project. Stick with Sharpies, okay? Um, I would also suggest that you start with a pencil drawing. If you wanna use a ruler, for sure go for it. I'm not going to. Um, I kind of like the sort of, um, what's what I wanna say? 
it's got a little bit of a charm to it, I think, when you have buildings drawn, not with a ruler. Um, it just adds a little bit more character to it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But I can also draw a fairly straight line without a ruler. So if you are nervous about that, use a ruler, at least for the pencil part. And then you can go over it with marker after. All right, um, as you guys know, Sharpie's permanent. So when I draw, do my drawing, then I can paint over it and it won't smudge my Sharpie, which is one of the reasons I love Sharpie. I've got my water cup here and a little bit of tape to tape down the edges of my paper. I didn't bother protecting my table, mostly because I'm using a thick paper and the Sharpie won't go through and watercolor is really easy to clean up. Obviously I've already spilled tonic and gin all over my table, so it doesn't matter. Um, but if you are worried about that, or if you're using a thinner paper, you're probably gonna want to protect your surface, okay? And yeah, got my water cup and what was a dry paper towel. So uh, I'm gonna get started and uh, I will do the demonstration. I'm probably gonna zoom up some or um, time-lapse some of it, zoom forward a little bit so you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. I'll do the drawing part and then I'll add the paint. And uh, yeah, you can try this out at home too, and I hope you do. One thing I wanna say, if you um, have little ones at home and you also watch my little box of paint for kids, this is something kids can absolutely do too. You just have to be careful if you're using permanent marker with really small children. So I would maybe suggest if you've got kids in like grade three or four, um, even older, they could do this activity for sure, okay? It's a cool activity you can play around with and feel successful because they'll feel like they're doing a, a true perspective drawing, even though we're cheating and we're not really, okay? Um, but yeah, this is uh, something that the whole family could do. So I'm gonna get started. Um, I am just gonna tape down the edges of my paper, of course. I don't plan on using a ton of water with this project, but just in case, right? You, I mean, it's not that great when your paper's bubbling up everywhere. So I'm gonna tape down my edges, just the corners. I'm not gonna bother with the whole frame for this. Alrighty. And I'm gonna start drawing my building. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm gonna start with one of the first buildings. Now you wanna think about your paper as if it's in three layers, okay? Foreground, middle ground, background. Obviously the objects in the foreground are closer, middle ground, middle, and background further away. Bottom of the paper is the foreground, middle of the paper is the middle ground, and top of the paper is the background. So I'm gonna start with some sort of smaller sized buildings in the middle, and I'm just gonna freehand draw this. Like I said, you should probably use pencil if it's your first time. I'm really gonna hope that I don't go off the edge here. And I'm just gonna draw a line that's relatively straight for my first building. All right, looks pretty good, okay? Um, from there, this is where we're gonna go in and get a little more, um, kind of play a little bit more with our perspective. So all you're gonna do is take your top two corners and choose a way to sort of angle them. There's our roof. There's our first building. Now, this building is not in perfect perspective by any means. If I were to draw more buildings, ideally you would want to see the same facade or front of each of those buildings and the roof kind of going off into the same direction. We could imagine our perspective lines would go back this way to a vanishing point, but we're gonna fake it and it's gonna look good because we're gonna do it to all of them, okay? So now I'm gonna draw another building. And I'm going to do the opposite. Aha, guess what I'm gonna do next? Draw another building. I'm gonna draw this one just a little bit closer. And this one's gonna be a little different. I'm gonna go in. Okay, now the trick is as I add on my buildings, I'm gonna just keep switching back and forth between having buildings that go one way and another way and then all the way to the back. So it's like I'm playing with a two point perspective and a one point perspective drawing. If you don't know what those are, it doesn't matter because we're not really drawing in perspective, right? So um, I'm gonna continue with this, keep going, and then I will finish up, add some details as well, and uh, I'll do the time-lapse so it goes a little quicker, then I'll pause it when I'm ready to paint and you can see the painting part. All right, let's see.
Okay, so now that you've drawn your buildings, added a few details, you'll see that I added some windows and different types of textures. That was just for fun. Um, now comes the painting. When you're doing the painting, try to stick to just a couple colors, okay? Unless you want it to be really crazy and fun, then do every color. Um, I'm gonna be coloring in some of my windows with a little bit of yellow or orange, maybe some gray, just to give the illusion that perhaps it's a city where people live and the lights are on. And I'm gonna be working with two tones of blue, um, some red, and once again, a little bit of the gray. So I'm actually using quite a lot of colors, but when you look at the piece, when it's finished, it won't seem that way, okay? Um, I am mostly gonna be using this type of brush. It's my smaller brush. It's got a bit of an angled edge, and you'll see in the video that I actually sort of almost draw in the color, okay? It's less of kind of like a painterly look with stroking the brush back and forth. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that now. You can see it. Um, it'll be time-lapse, so it'll go by pretty quick. And then we will have a finished painting at the very end. <laughs> Cheers. Now we are ready for the big reveal. Take off the tape. Um, fortunately, since I didn't use too much water, this dried pretty fast. And we have a finished, sort of, it's almost like a doodle, like a cartoon doodle of a little city. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you end up trying it out on your own, regardless of whether it turns out or not, please share it with me so I can see. Once again, I highly suggest you just go for it and try drawing freehand. But if you're more comfortable using a ruler, that would be great too. Um, but I think once you're, they're kind of all put together, the sort of uh, unevenness of the buildings, like I said, has a little bit of a charm to it. So don't forget to take a look at some of my other YouTube tutorials. I have more for grown-ups where we enjoy a delicious beverage while we create some art. And I have a lot of posts or videos for art for kids too. Things that you can do at home, with materials you should be able to find around the house. Um, so if you've got little ones, or if you wanna try some kid art as a grown-up, um, that's an option too. You can take a look, I'm on YouTube, at a little box of paints. Also on Instagram, a little box of paints, and the Facebook page, a little box of paints. Have a super awesome week and I'll be posting one for kids really soon. So stay tuned and uh, yeah, hope you have a great day.